University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences is conducting research that impacts Florida and the world. At over a dozen different facilities located across the state, UF IFAS researchers are discovering new knowledge and developing new technologies that will improve industries, protect natural resources, and benefit communities. These scientists work in a variety of areas, from agricultural production and wildlife conservation to DNA marker identification and cryopreservation. And their work is making an impact on a global scale. UF IFAS research is committed to improving lives through science, and here is a brief look at just a few of the UF IFAS research programs making an impact this year. UF IFAS research is learning to grow a new crop that could help keep farmers in business and help fuel military jets. UF IFAS plant pathologist, Dr. Jim Marwa, is learning to grow Ethiopian mustard, or carinata. He thinks the plant could be a good cover crop for peanut and cotton farmers looking to prevent soil erosion during the winter season. Dr. Marwa and a team of UF IFAS researchers are studying the plant's ability to act as a natural soil fumigant to help fight nematodes and its ability to extract nitrogen from the soil. A lot of times after corn and cotton, you leave nitrogen in the soil. And we're hoping that this as a cover crop will get some of that nitrogen back. And, and we're hoping with the yields that we're expecting that we can maybe get 50 pounds of nitrogen per acre back out of that soil that, that could possibly go in the groundwater and get it back up into a crop and back into the farmer's pocket as cash. Carinata plants produce a seed that can be harvested for its oil and farmers can make up to $800 an acre for the seeds. The oil produced has a unique lipid profile and is currently being tested by the U.S. military for use as an alternative drop-in jet fuel. UF IFAS research is giving new life to an old industry. Tapping and collecting pine oleo resin was once an important industry in Florida but increased labor cost and competition pushed the industry overseas. UF IFAS researchers developed new production techniques that will allow crews to tap twice as many trees per hour and collect higher quality resin that is free of contaminants. UF IFAS geneticist Dr. Gary Peter is also working to identify the genes responsible for increased oleoresin production in pine trees with the goal of developing new varieties of pine trees with these genes. My 10-year vision is that landowners would start to go out tap now, they would be replanting with trees that were genetically improved to increase their yield, um, and then the, the industry would scale um, from there. We have existing markets already to take that into renew valuable renewable chemicals, and ultimately we an anticipate the first biofuel products will be uh, jet fuel. These new production techniques also allow landowners to collect oleoresin without damaging the trees or decreasing the value when the trees are harvested for wood. Researchers hope that collecting oleoresin will give landowners an additional revenue stream so they can stay in business and keep this sustainable industry growing. Despite being native to Florida, very little is known about fox squirrels. What researchers do know is that these squirrels act as seed dispersers and are critical for the regeneration of the pine wood savanna ecosystem. UF IFAS wildlife researcher Dr. Robert McCleary and his team are on a mission to learn more about why the smaller gray squirrel is outcompeting the larger fox squirrels for resources. McClary set up cameras on golf courses and in other large open areas where the fox squirrels prefer to live. Researchers use the images to identify individuals and keep tabs on their movements. Well, you know, we'd really hope to have a better understanding of where they occur, what their populations are, and then be able to implement recommendations on how can we create environments that are conducive to fox squirrels so that people can enjoy them and so that they can continue to persist in Florida and um, help to regenerate healthy uh, pineland savanna systems where they occur. 
Because fox squirrels are common in urban areas, researchers are asking residents to post photos of these squirrels on a website, along with information about where the picture was taken. The goal in using citizen science is to gather vital information about populations which will help state and federal agencies to better protect this important native species. UFIFAS eco-hydrologist Dr. Matt Cohen and his team are showcasing the impact that a single organism can have on an entire ecosystem. Researchers originally thought that the algae growth in springs was caused by nitrate runoff. However, their research shows that the decline in snail populations is a key factor in the overgrowth of algae in Florida Springs. These snails feed on algae and prevent the overgrowth of algae that can choke out other underwater plants. Researchers say this work demonstrates why every organism living in an ecosystem is important for the survival of the entire system. In ecology, there's a long legacy of describing these trophic cascades where removing top predators has these unexpected and often quite catastrophic effects on the plants and the, and the structure of the ecosystem. And to be able to demonstrate that that is an enormously important pathway of change that we should be considering, I think was, was an important contribution to the, to the discourse about how to make sure that these springs are sustained for the future. Researchers are now trying to determine what is causing the decline in snail populations. They say data suggests that changes in water flow because of water consumption or climate change could play a key role in snail survival. Cryopreservation may sound like a technology from the future, but it's been around for decades. Dr. Wagner Vendrame a UF IFAS environmental horticulture researcher is using this technology to protect Florida's endangered native orchids. Cryopreservation uses liquid nitrogen to freeze seeds and plant tissue so it can be germinated and grown in the future. But traditional methods of cryopreservation can reduce germination rates by half, meaning only half of the preserved seeds will grow into plants. UF IFAS researchers have developed a new system of protocols for cryopreservation and a new cryoprotectant solution that can boost the germination rates after cryopreservation. Recently, we tried new compounds like fluoroglucinol, which is a, an antioxidant that actually we realized that that was able to give us a rate of germination after cryopreservation very similar to initial viability. So we thought, wow, we're onto something here. This is a product that can really enhance germination after cryopreservation. UF IFAS researchers want to share what they've learned about this simple and inexpensive technology in order to help researchers around the world preserve orchids and other plants that are in danger of extinction. Rice is a critically important food crop for people around the world but increasing global temperatures have decreased yields and made it more difficult for farmers to grow. UF IFAS horticulture researcher, Dr. Bala Rathina Sabapathy, identified a gene linked to stress tolerance in a fern plant and transferred that gene into a rice plant. By using this fern gene, by expressing it in rice plants, we can improve rice tolerance to high temperature stress. Researchers linked this gene to protein called glutaredoxin, and they believe this protein could be the key to increasing heat tolerance in other crop plants. The goal is to develop new crop varieties that can grow at higher temperatures so that farmers around the world will be able to continue feeding their communities. UF IFAS research is supporting communities and improving lives by transferring new technology developed in campus laboratories to industries. Dr. Matthias Kirst, a UF IFAS quantitative genetics researcher, co-founded Rapid Genomics with two former students to make genomic sequencing easier and faster with technology they patented. 
So essentially what the company does, it uses those approaches and, and commercializes them in the form of a service. So very clearly there you see the power of transferring development, information, resources created at the university into the business world. In four years, Rapid Genomics has tripled its number of employees and the volume of samples the company analyzes has grown by more than 50% every year. One constant in Florida is change. Every day, the state's industries, natural resources, and people face new challenges. And UF IFAS Research is ready to help Florida meet them. UF IFAS Research is committed to find the answers, the knowledge, and the solutions that Florida residents need in order to live better lives. With the help of UF IFAS Research, Florida is moving forward to a bright future.